two. So what we want to do is go ahead and press X and delete the cube, then Shift A, add a plane, and we'll just select this top edge and press M to merge its center, and then we'll press Q and bevel this in object mode. And while inside of bevel, you can actually press Shift Enter and it will apply that particular modifier. And we'll go under Mesh Tools and we'll Control click on Dice in order to dice this. And we'll turn off Z by pressing Z and we'll perform a dice and then go in Edit Mode, select everything, and we are just going to select a boundary loop and press Control G and add it to a new group. So first we'll put a subdivision modifier on it and then we'll put a cloth modifier. And from here we can go to our cloth settings and begin having some fun. So first after adding some pressure we see that it begins flying away and that is because we did not pin our group. And so now that we have it pinned in place we can begin playing with the shrinking amount to begin giving it a padded look. And we put a subdivision before to give it some extra geo for the purposes of the simulation, but it's also nice to put a subdivision modifier at the end of it in order to also add some additional smoothing. So if we just start it over, it just comes out and begins playing. In fact, we can find a frame before where things are actually just right. In fact, it actually looks good the longer you let it play. So something like that is acceptable. So we can just press Control A while hovering over these modifiers in order to apply them. We'll press N and go to Kit Ops and we'll choose the new demo. And we'll just choose to create insert. And so here we are in a new Kit Ops scene. We look through our camera. We probably want to choose camera to insert, make sure we're scaled right. And we'll just save this and call this cloth pad one. And we'll just save our insert. And let's also take this moment to give this a blank material and also maybe we can rotate it and I'm even going to go in edit mode and just uh, embellish it a little bit by just raising some parts up just to make sure that the thumbnail looks just right. And even the camera seems a little zoomed in so we'll just GZZ pull that out and render our thumbnail and from here we can close the scene and everything's all done. If we press control N, we can make a new file. And if we just go to the Kit Ops tab, we'll just click on new demo and list it in our inserts that we created is cloth pad. So from here, we can just choose actually create insert again. We'll choose to add insert. And here we go, just adding cloth pads without any further ado. So with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time. So using the same ideology shown in the previous segment, basically any shape could be turned into a cloth. So we could take this, perform a curve extract, go under mesh tools, control click dice in order to dice it on all axes. And then after doing that, we just grab our boundary loop, add it to a group, and we can just add our subdivision, put our cloth modifier, go under cloth, and begin affecting the pressure. And we set our pin group, and we play with our shrinking factor, and instantly we are good to go. And there's even more than that. So this is just scratching the surface. So we can add another subdivision at the end, which I find always just makes it look nice. We have it come out, it comes out very smooth. But more interestingly, if we take this into local mode, we can go under white paint and we can see our weight group. And at this time, we can also add a vertex weight edit. And if we just drag this up before the cloth after the subdivision, we see that nothing's happening here. And we'll change this to group add, maybe choose normalize weights, and we'll choose to invert to fall off. And from here, we'll click on this texture button to add a texture. And this is where things begin getting interesting. We can go in and add something like wood, and we see that it's affected the pinning for the weight group, which means that, of course, it's also going to affect the result of the cloth simulation. So if we were to simulate it, because we're in weight paint, it's going to get a little bit weird. But if we go back to object mode and go back to frame one, 
we see that now we're able to look at our wood pattern in real time showing up in the cloth. And there's even more to it than just this. This is just scratching the surface, but it's always fun to get in and play with Blender itself to see what kind of options it offers before um, immediately going for the automation route. But another thing we also notice is that simulation sometimes will hang on to the previous result and not completely recache. And that can be helped actually by just turning the cloth modifier off and on, then it will simulate the way it's supposed to. And we see that, you know, our texture is able to show through in our result, which is interesting in and of itself. But we've just been doing a lot of uh, playing around with it lately, just kind of seeing uh, what sort of interesting cloth results we're able to get. And then of course, if we want to see it in more detail, we can just turn the uh, subdivision modifier up which will also increase the uh, computational times. But if we wanted to do that, we also would need to begin playing with the pressure. But the weight that comes up with higher geometry is just something that we do aim to mitigate. So by taking it back to frame one, we see the result that we're getting so far. And we can go in here and just begin playing with our default weight just to give this more or less influence on the actual simulation itself. In fact, we probably want to minimize it. And just all these parameters just offer such interesting behaviors whenever it comes to getting cloth to behave. So I wanted to close the video on a deeper note, just kind of talking about cloth in general. But with that, I'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.